swell, which they're doing right now. Okay, so we got next. Uh, Men in black. Men 
remember that? Was it K and L? Mm -hmm. Good. Kind of get where we're going here, right? These are buddies. Like, buddy movies make a lot of money, okay? F the formula is there. People love stories about buddies, okay? And then they try to make us believe that they understand what friends are, like having a show that has the whole thing, I'll be there for you, okay? Anybody watch this show no. ever? No. Get out of here right now. I don't want you on my camera. Sit down. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I see I admire even more now. Golden Girls. Golden Girls, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're getting groups now, okay? Not just buddy buddies. We're, you'll do, like, groups of friends here. Okay, ready? Okay. There's the, probably, yep. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's turn off the uh, phones, guys, okay? Right now? Okay. Turn the phones off. Whose phone is ready? Turn it off. Come on now, you're at church. You know, it's the fourth or fifth year here. You don't know by right now. When you come in, you turn it off. Rock, rock. You never missed a show, did you, Pat? <laughs> oh, no, no, boy. <laughs> you hear something cool? You remember the rock punk band, uh, uh, Devo? Remember Devo? Whip it, whip it good. And only, only. Well, anyway, the leader of Devo, Mark Mothersbaugh, he's the musical director for Rugrats. Wonder what Rugrats. Yeah, we wonder whatever happens, good. Okay. Come on. Third product, uh, Come on. Big Bang Theory. Bang Theory. There you go, okay? Oh my gosh. Okay. Come on. Office? No. What? No? No, that is Parks, Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. Okay? And we'll end it with sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. Now, we don't know. Uh, every week, we do have a church phone number, okay? And uh, uh, people. Like when, when they need to get a hold of me or they need to get a hold of us, I get the messages after a while. And like it's usually within a day or two or three days, and they know whether it's urgent. So we do have a phone number, but we do not have a full time church secretary. And when I was in churches, like the last one and the one before that, I, I have I love having custom tones on my phone. Where when my son from LA calls, I get the Mickey Mouse theme. When um, um, my son is in Saskatoon and I need help because it used to be Woodstock, you know, I went by the, the old Crosby Stills and Dash song by the time we had the Woodstock. That's what would ring when Ben would call. Now I got running back to Saskatoon with the who, who with the guess who goes, okay? Um, my daughter, when Heather calls, I get Frank Sinatra, love and marriage, love and And, and uh, when my mechanic calls, I got Alice Cooper under my wheels, you know, ton of telephone is ringing, okay? So I know, okay? Um, the, my computer tech guy, Kent Moon, there's a real funny song by the Arrogant Worms. It's called The Guy with Computer Know-How. Oh, and it's funny as anything. So that's a race, okay? And whenever a church with the, that I was on staff at, whenever they would ring me, it would always play sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. That's the way the church ought to be, right? Sure. In fact, and I got a whole message that I preach. Someday we'll get it here. Whatever church could learn from a bar. Okay? The reason why bars are packed and do a wonderful business is because the churches are not fulfilling their calling. Okay? People do not go to bars to get drunk and get hammered. People go to bars because they like being around people. They like having fun. Okay? And that's why Ephesians says, be filled with the Holy Spirit and don't be drunk with wine, with leads to debauchery, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay? And the reason it says that is because everybody likes to have fun and we don't all have everything in common. But when you get a room of people filled with the Holy Spirit, it's amazing how well we get along. It's unbelievable. Okay? So uh, I'm in the business of emptying bars for good reason. Okay? Like that's the way it should be here. Okay? And I could, the whole sermon is a strong biblical case for that. That's not what I'm preaching today. Okay? So um, you kind of get the theme of this thing here. I'm talking about friends. I'm talking about friendships here. Okay? Which is. Uh, Way more serious than a lot of us think it is, okay? Now, I started off with, you know, a bunch of stuff like we all relate to. We understand the friendships that are in front of us. And um, if we really have the Holy Spirit, if we are really connected in the family of God, our friendships and our commitment to one another ought to be way more solid than anything we ever saw on the screen. And anyway, that's not an indictment, that's just, you know, most of you know God enough to know that that be true. Now, I'm going to look at a few scriptures here, okay? A lot of these, most of these you've seen before, but maybe not in the context I'm going to be giving you here. Greater love 
Has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. That scripture has on more military tombstones than any other scripture in the Bible. Okay? It's always associated with military. Okay? Now, I kind of sense there was a little bit more to this verse than being just the military verse. Now, I want to take, I mean, that's great that they use the military. I, that's the way it should be used. It's wonderful. But there's more to it than that. Okay? So I wanted to know that word that says lay down. I knew that was one Greek word, and I looked it up, and the Greek word is tithemi. Tithemi. Okay? What does tithemi mean? It means to lay down in a passive way, to be submissive. It actually denotes horizontal, you know, not just a posture of vertical, horizontal, laying down. Okay? Now, there is a downside to this verse being used in military. Okay, I'll tell you what it is. Because it's associated with military so much, this verse has a lofty nature. Oh, you only bring that up when somebody gives their life for somebody. No, no, it's more to it than that. Okay? Not taking of anything away of how noble it is to be on military tombstones, that's a good thing, okay? But Man raised that scripture to that loftiness, not God. It's, it's got reality and power for us in our everyday relationships, okay? And I want to show you how what I mean by this. I'm going to bring it home on this. Again, not taking anything away from it, but there's more to it than this. There's no greater love than somebody that, that tithemes their life for a friend. And I'm going to compare it to this scripture. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Now, I knew that give himself up thing. I knew that was one Greek word too. So I looked up that one. And, and sure enough, here we go. It's the word paradidomy. Well, it's not the same word. But I'm telling you, it may, be the same, it may as well be the same as Tiffany. It's almost the same thing. The same meaning. Okay? It's, it means to give up. To surrender. To cast. In other words, take up the favor of casting where you're doing the work and the load instead of the other person. Okay? It means to deliver. You ever heard that term in sports? Yeah, so and so when he gets the ball, he really delivers the points. Okay? Delivers. Okay? Delivers. It also means, as crazy, put in prison. Put in prison. Okay? You are taking the place of somebody. Okay? You are laying down their... The two Greek words are almost identical. Okay? There is no greater love than when you're laying down your life for somebody. And this, it, it's perfect for the military thing because it's friends. Okay, it's not friends. You're rarely working with relatives. Here it's talking about marriage, okay? But Christ uses this as Christ gave himself up for the church. He's talking about the family principle that works in the body of Christ. He talks about the standard that he has put up. This is what love is. This is what friendship is. This is the gold standard. You can tell the value of a friendship by the way we lay down, the way we give up, the way we surrender for the sake of each other. I don't think it's too far away from the biblical ideal to say that real friendship in the body of Christ, real friendship is giving up. It's giving up. Oh, he's my friend. Why? Because he likes the same hockey teams as me. Because he collects the same crazy stuff that I do. Because, you know, we laugh at the same joke. It's giving up. That other stuff is not bad. It's pretty good. As a matter of fact, that other stuff can lead to real friendship. But real friendship is giving up. It is. You want to know how great the friendship is? How much giving up is there going on? Mutually. Okay? Look at, look at this. Now, this is... I've never... As I, the Word of God to me is so powerful. I, I almost feel unworthy communicating it. Because it's way up here. And I'm down here and I can see it. I go, wow, that's amazing. This is one of those scriptures that I've often thought, it may not hit you like this, but it does me. I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourselves. So that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Oh, that's a loaded verse there. That is loaded. That means that Jesus says, you know, it's okay. It's like I'm talking bribery here. I'll tell you what he's talking about. If friendship is giving up, then we can build our friendships through our generosity. He even connects it to going to heaven. Isn't that crazy? 
Okay? Get, use it to build friendships. Well, you're just trying to buy the person off. You don't know that. Okay? Yeah, that goes on. Of course, bribery is a very real thing. But hey, don't throw the baby out with the baptismal water here. Okay? Okay? This is a practice that we could probably get better at within the body of Christ. Okay? You, it's a command from Jesus. Hey, use this to build friendships. It has the ability to do that. Our Lord said so. Are you going to argue with him? <laughs> when has he ever been wrong? He, he's so right in straight. I mean, he's beyond right. He is the truth, okay? He's the embodiment of truth. Now, I've got a little, another bit of a test here for you, okay? It's the lyrics to a song. Met a man on the roadside crying. Without a friend, there's no denying. You're incomplete. There'll be no finding looking for what you knew. So anytime somebody needs you, don't let them down, although it grieves you. Someday you'll need someone like they do, looking for what you do. Mm, I'm telling you now, the greatest thing you could ever do now is try to smile with someone who's blue now. It's very easy. Just Who wrote that? There's no way you're going to guess. Do you know? Rich, you were the guy that I hoped would have it. That is from Led Zeppelin. Okay, the song is called Friends. Not bad for a hedonistic, you know, a cultic, <laughs> head banging bad, you know. Pretty good, not bad. Now, here's a, another one here. You guys, I don't have the lyrics for this, but you got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. When the road looks Rough ahead, and you're miles and miles from your nice warm bed. You just remember what your old pal said. Listen to the lyrics now. You got a friend in me. Yeah, you got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. You got troubles. I got them too. There isn't nothing I wouldn't do for you. We stick together and we see it through because you got a friend in me. Okay, what was the movie? Toy Story. 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 The point I'm trying to make is people who don't have the Lord, people who don't have the light of Christ, they know what friendship is. They know the difference between you know, a real friendship and you know something that's kind of like not as strong. What's the point I'm making? We need to be cornering the market on the best friendships. We ought to be out friending everybody. What was Jesus called? He was a friend of sinners. Okay? Why would you be a friend of sinners? That's what Christ-like people do. That's a measurement of love. Remember I said real friendship is giving. <laughs> Who gave more than him? <laughs> Why were you yet sinners? I mean, if we, if we, if we, and I don't mean to flog it here, because... It's not, we need to do this. It's, when you have Christ, this is the measuring stick. Okay? I don't mean to flog people who are to themselves and are too busy and all that. I'm telling you, the world and the people we were to minister to all week and the people you want to reach in your apartments and homes and neighborhoods and schools and workplaces, they know. And God has given you a language. Well, I can't share the gospel. I don't know too many scriptures. God has given you a scripture to eloquently and powerfully win the world right here. Okay? Well, yeah, but that's for special people. No, it isn't. It's for people who are, who are lost in love with Jesus. Because when you are in love with Jesus, when you find out what he's really like, when you have a relationship with the Lord, you're not working at it anymore. You can't hide it. Okay? It changes your outlook on people. Well, I should be more forgiving. You can't be more forgiving with Jesus, without Jesus. But if Jesus really comes in, he will blow you away. In fact, I know I've talked to at least two dozen people in this room right now who have practiced forgiveness, who have practiced tolerance, who have practiced patience, who have faithfully prayed and seen God do things. And you know what your reaction has been? They couldn't believe how much great strength God gave me. I couldn't believe that he enabled me to do that. They know where their strength is, okay? 
So this is a, oh, John tells we got to be more forgiving. No, no. I'm trying to raise the value of what it means to really have Christ take over in your life. Okay? Okay? And this is a, a wonderful, wonderful evidence that, that he's there in the body of Christ, in the family of God. Okay? In the family of God, friendships, okay, and friends, they turn into brothers and sisters. What's the movie here? Or the TV series? Band of Brothers, yeah. How many saw the whole thing? Put your hand up. Like, it's secular, but boy, you know one thing they capture there? These guys are going through life and death, man. And it, it, it shows it pretty accurately. There's a lot of scenes. I, I can't watch gory scenes. Heather, if, if there was a medical channel, she'd want to see surgeries take place. She's really into that. You know, like, old dust on. I, she knows, okay? I, I'll look at I've told you guys this a number of times. Uh, like when we went saw Passion of the Christ, I missed a third of the movie because I was always looking at Heather. I kind of looked down. No, not yet, not yet, not yet. Okay, now, you know. And, and we had to do that through Band of Brothers. And uh, some of you military guys, you know, you get talking to guys that have gone through the war together. You can't get them to talk. They don't because they just know you wouldn't understand. And if they do talk, they tear up, man. Because that's not just their friends. There was something that happened there. It's spiritual that happens. Okay, when there's life and death there. But the same dynamic happens in the body of Christ, okay? Friends turn into brothers and sisters. That's God's will. Psalm 62, I think it's 10 or 9, God sets the lonely in families. It's not just hyperbole, okay? It's the real deal, and I'm leading this up to a point of, of, of how powerful it can be in our lives, okay? Friends. Let me see. Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay. Friends. They have your back. <laughs> they help you move. They listen to you on the phone. They go out of their way to make life easier for you. Your troubles keep them up at night. Good. Why? Because you're worth it. And your friend has found that out about you. God already knows you're worth it. But your friend has found out they're worth it. Now in the body of Christ, it's because God has revealed that to him or her. God has revealed your eternal worth to them. That's a, when God does that in somebody's life, you're not just born again anymore. Okay? You're becoming a, a, a disciple of Christ. Becoming a man of God. A woman of God. Now, I said all those nice things about friends, and, and uh, uh, friends can hurt you too. <clears throat> Nobody can hurt you like the ones you really love. Okay? Now, why does that happen? It happens because of, of carelessness. Um, we take each other for granted. We entertain thoughts of, well, they won't mind. I'll get away with it, you know? Um, there's lack of grace. You know, in, in the person that's hurt, there's lack of grace and being willing to kind of fluff it off and just assume the best. Um, sometimes you could be holding a friend to a standard that's too high, okay? And um, sometimes there's misreading signals. I, there's all sorts of reasons why. Because the devil hates friendships. He is going to always make mountains on the molehills. He is on anything, especially the body of Christ. He's going to get you. He's going to, he is trying to divide us all the time because one of the most, probably the most powerful force we have is, no, no. They're going to know we're disciples if we have love one toward another. If Jesus said something like that, it makes sense for the devil to say, well, man, all I got to do, you know, I'm going to destroy their credibility. I'm going to have people think, well, there's just a bunch of church goofs. And he's going to work on our friendships. He is going to attack them. He is going to misrepresent your brothers and sisters in this room. He's going to do everything to create a negative attitude against them. Okay? And, and one of the problems is, is that we can't read minds. Okay? Um, now, that's true. But now I got this theory here. This is not biblical, but I'm going to share it with you. Okay? I haven't shared this with too many of you. It might be new for most of you. I have this theory, and I can't prove it by Scripture, but I'm not saying this is the Word of God. But you take it and weigh it and you think about it, okay? I don't know about you, but I think about heaven a lot, okay? 
How are you going to find a, a, a slide that depicts heaven? Well, I didn't want one with a city far out. I wanted to see one like a street that was beautiful with people talking and everything. And, you know, we're in heaven. Um, because we're going to have free will in heaven. What's going to stop us from sinning? What's going to stop us from not forgiving? What's going to stop Well, we won't have the sin nature anymore. That's true, but we still will have free will because the angels have free will. The angels, Lucifer and the angels, they rebelled against God in a perfect world. Why? Because they had free will. What will stop us from rebelling? Here's my theory. Some of you, it's, this is going to be unsettling, but if you think a little bit more about it, and I reserve the right to be wrong. I just throw it out there. I think, because it says in 1 Corinthians 13, then I will be known, then I will know even as I am fully known. Okay? Now that's been interpreted for centuries as, you know, we're going to have all our mental faculties, our brains will be sharp. And I, yeah, I accept that, but I think there's more to it than that. I will be known, I will know even as I'm fully known. I think, I think that we're going to be able to read minds when we're up there. I think it's going to be impossible to hide any thoughts there. And the worst of the worst that you have, you will not be able to hide it, okay? But nobody's going to hold it against you because nobody's there outside of the grace of God anyway. Nobody's going to hold it against you because everybody struggles with that kind of stuff. And there's going to be total acceptance. You will not be able to hide. You will not be... Everybody will... I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna know even as I'm fully known. If I'm fully known, that means I can't hide a thing. I'm fully known by everybody. Well, I guess I'm free to be myself then, because there's 100% acceptance of all our shortcomings and our out of whack thoughts and everything, because everybody struggles with the same thing. Okay? I'm not saying I'm right. You know, just think about it. But I've often thought, how are we gonna get along? Oh yeah, I struggle with those thoughts too. Don't worry about it. You know? We won't even have to say that because we already know. Okay? Someone's got to be up there for us to get along, right? I don't think that, okay. You know, it's time to put that slide up there. So what? Okay? So what? Here's the punchline. Okay? So what? This, I'm, I'm going to give you a, man, I don't know if I've ever preached on this. God forgive me. Exhort at one another every day. Exhort one another every day. That's a command. Exhort. Do you know what it means to exhort somebody? It says exhort one another. These deep speed in the body of Christ. Exhort one another every day. To exhort means to cheer on, means to encourage, means to build up, means to make stronger. Okay? Why would that be in there? Exhort one another every day. Put the timing on it. Not just once a week, not just on Sunday. Get better at texting. Get better at, you know? I'm doing that more and more. If I feel a positive thing about something, I won't do it for flattery's sake just because I wrote, because people can see right through that too. But if I feel, you know, son, if I got to text Steve, you know, I feel like telling Steve, he's, you know, he's a great guy. And that's something I appreciate about him. Bang. He's going to get the text right away. Okay? Okay? I'm learning how to do this. The Bible says do it every day. Exhort one another every day. If you want to take it to legalistic extremes, it might mean you better get the list of everybody's phone number in the room today because he wants you exhorting everybody in this room every day. I don't, I don't know. You know, you can interpret it any way you want. It doesn't say that, so it's open to you to milk that puppy for all it's worth. There's power there. Exhort one another every day. Why? You know Why? Because Romans 3, 4 says, Let God be true and every man a liar. Exhort everyone every day because, because we're all being lied to every day. We're all being deceived. Your flesh lies to you. And it's wicked above all things. Okay, We struggle with it. The devil knows your weaknesses and he lies to you. The media, oh, we all trust everything that's on the TV and on the tube, don't we? Of course we do. Lying to us all the time. We live in a world bombarded with corruption and uh, the, the solution is exhort one another every day. Oh, uh, How many times have you told somebody, you know, somebody, you know, like, how you doing? I feel like garbage, blah, 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 garbage, this, this, this. Oh, well, that's not you at all. I know you. You're a good guy. you got Jesus in you. And here's some reasons. Bang, 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 bang. Okay? It doesn't mean you're in denial over, and God may believe, well, yeah, that's true, but you know, you and I together, and God, we, we can conquer that. 
That's what friends do. That's what brothers and sisters do. Okay? The calling. And we need it. I mean, I'm surprised this isn't more of Canadian culture. One of our national symbols is the Canada goose. Okay? They are a pain in the neck animal. Let Heather tell you stories about working in a provincial park and having to get a uh, kid. They are territorial. They are not afraid of you. They will attack you. And I won't even go to what they do to golf courses. I mean, my God, yeah, it's just like, you know? But one thing they got down, okay? And they only discovered this the last 30, 40 years. How come they honk? You know why they honk? Some of you have done the research, okay? They honk, they honk to exhort each other. They honk to cheer one another on. They honk because there's always one that's breaking the wind, and the wind currents are, fifth, are, are, are stronger in that lead goose than any of the rest of them, and they all get in there, and they, they, they know the benefit of some of them taking turns. And that one that's leading, the rest of them are honking and honking because they're encouraging. Come on, man, go, 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 go. It's encouragement, okay? And that's why those crazy things are able to fly from, from uh, northern Manitoba down to the Caribbean, you know, and, and in like in, in four weeks, okay? That's a long flight, man. And top speed of those things is maybe 20, 25 miles an hour, maybe 30 miles an hour, okay? And, but they go honk, 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 and the load is easier because they got it down pat. You know, what were you going to say, Rich? Except around Ottawa, they're not allowed. <laughs> I knew you were thinking about it. But you want to know something? We honked anyway because we understand the principle, okay? Okay, um, let me tell you what just might be the most powerful gift in the kingdom of God, okay? And I know God is, or, you know, desire the greater gifts, but I think this probably is the greatest gift. Being a real friend, that's a gift, man. Being a real friend. In fact, I think it's so powerful that God didn't want us just entering in on that in our own strength. Because I don't think anybody here is forgiving enough, Christ-like enough. Apart from Him, we could do nothing. But I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Well, I've never been that great a friend. Well, then let Jesus take over a little bit more of your life. And I don't say that mean. He can deal with that. Okay? He can change your heart. Man alive. You start praying, God, don't let me have my way, have your way. He will blow your mind of what you are capable of in the power of the Holy Spirit. I guess what I want to see is the, the value of real committed friendship needs to rise in this church family. It's good. In fact, the fact that it's good frees me to say what I'm saying here. I know you guys are already in the groove here, but I don't think we've touched the surface of what the Holy Spirit's capable of doing through us. Through people who are, here's a good term, expert friends. On the biblical scale, not what you saw in Hollywood. That's nice. There's nothing wrong with it. And I use that example because even the Bible, I mean, like even the world understands the value of it. And what do they do? They make money off it. Make money, you know. Because people watch those movies, they oh, they live their lives with carries they say, oh, I wish I had a friend like that. I wish I could do that. I wish I was part of that group, you know. Here we are. Okay. You know what the worst thing about churches is? Clicks. You know? Now, again, don't throw the baby out with the baptismal water. Clicks are fantastic if you're in the click. So how do we milk the dynamic of how wonderful clicks are? Never keep them closed. As long as they're open, as long as everybody can break in, they become the greatest thing in the world. They are. There's nothing more wonderful than belonging. Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And you want to know something? They know your name, and they know how full of crap you are, and they still love you. Isn't that great? While we were yet sinners, Christ died. Christ paid the ultimate price for to buy friendship. Use worldly wealth to gain friends. He used his body, his very his everything to win friends, to win the world. Okay? Hmm.
communion time. Okay? I'm going to ask uh, the crew to... Uh, um, I'm seated already, which is nice. My hips are really getting bad, guys, so... No, I'm not lacking in faith. I'm trusting God. I mean, anybody accuses me of lacking in faith, this is how I react, you know? Because I'm actually ready to be, well, God, faith, you be healed. But you know what I say? You know what? The devil can almost destroy me. It's going to take a lot more than that to slow me down, okay? Because in my weakness, he is made strong. And then they, they run out of scriptures because I got more than they do, you know? And, and I'm delighting in the Lord and, and uh, hallelujah. So we're going to go to communion. And, and you know... The verse that, uh, thanks guys, um, you know the verse that says uh, you ought to judge yourself because some bring on the judgment of God because they do not discern the body of Christ. Yes, these are emblems of the body of Christ, but the context of 1 Corinthians 11, he's rebuking them because they weren't being the friends that they were supposed to be. They were, they were abusing friendships. They didn't recognize that the church gathering where Paul and Apollos and Peter and the rest of them were preaching and trying to start churches with Timothy and Silas and Mark, okay? You guys aren't recognizing. This just isn't a collection of people that believe the same stuff. This is the body of Christ. And when you don't recognize the body of Christ, it's the same when Jesus says when you've done it on the least of these, you've done it on the meat, okay? He identifies with people that are ignored, Okay? You are not recognizing the body of Christ and you are bringing judgment on yourself. Okay? So when we participate today, the primary thing is, this is not just a church ritual thing. This is the body of Christ. We are part of the same body. Okay? Now, they disregarded it and they brought judgment on themselves. So here's the positive side. When we really get this down, when we really start loving, okay? When we become committed like Jesus wants us to be committed to each other, there's a positive aspect to it. Because if there's a negative of not discerning, then there has to be a positive when you are discerning. Okay? And it's the presence of the power of the Lord. It's miracles. It's answered prayer. It's the dynamic. It's the peace that passes understanding. It's the all those promises in God unlocked. Okay? Okay? Let's hold the bread. Represented of the, of the body of Jesus, which was laid down and was broken for us. And lots of times during the communion time, when the when the pastor says broken, people will do this snap. Okay? Body was broken. Was never broken, literally, because the psalmist said that not a bone in his body was ever broken. So what does it mean? His will was broken. Will was broken. He's not living for himself. Did not live for himself. And one of the greatest things that can happen in your life is what Jesus means when he says, look, you seek first my kingdom, I'll take care of you better than you can ever take care of yourself. The Bible is filled with that philosophy, especially the Gospels. Okay? One of the greatest principles you can get is, God, I don't want to live for myself anymore. Now that, hey, if you don't trust him, this going to be tough. I'm telling you that if there's people here that, that are not there yet, and it's good news, because you don't know Jesus like he can, he can be known. Okay? That's not a bad thing. Once you find out what he's like, you, won't, you do not have to be convinced. That's where he wants to bring you. Okay? And it's, oh, it's an amazing place to be. Father, please take what I'm trying to communicate and burn it into our spirits. Lord, you can communicate to people way better than I can. And Lord, we want the understanding of the broken body of Christ, your will broken. That's what we want in our lives, Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's partake of the animals together. Well, John, it's nice for you to say that, but, you know, I doubt my faith. I'm only screwing up. What if I told you that the contract of your salvation was signed in the most perfect blood ever? I still can't handle that. I still don't understand that. Okay? And the devil uses it against me. Oh, come on, John. God's already forgiven you. Don't worry about it. I, I, I make up those... I... So should we lower the standard and the power of the blood of Christ because I use it? No, no. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. I, I, I just... I'm supposed to be the pastor. I'm supposed to know how to do this. I'm disarmed by his blood. I don't know how to communicate. This is just, it's beyond my... And I look at the emblem of it and I go, God, 
I pray, Lord, that there will be a day come when I really, really fully grasp how unbelievable your grace is and how much I owe you. How much I owe you. Jesus, help us with that. I can't pretend, God. And God, thank you so much that I'm in a family where, where we're all kind of cheering each other on and help each other grow in you. Your word says that all you're getting, get understanding. Lord, I pray you give us a supernatural understanding of the power of your awesome saving blood, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Hallelujah. That's another great thing about being with people who are your friends. You don't, admire, you don't, you don't mind admitting your faults. You don't mind being honest, okay? Got a goofy song for you. Oh, John, way to kill it. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> what you say again? Get Start 2023 without a Cordy song. Wow, that's heavy. I don't know if I'd want to be under that legalism, but anyway. Why don't you stand? Some of you are going to know this. Okay. I was going to I was gonna leave out the third verse because it's so corny. Okay. But I thought, nah, let the Holy Spirit do his thing, okay? If you know what, say it. If you don't, I'm along. If you think we're crazy, you're probably right. Here we go, okay? Come ye that love the Lord and let your joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And thus surround the throne. And thus surround the throne. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Let those refuse to sing who never knew our God. The children of the heavenly King, the children of the heavenly King, shall speak their joys abroad, shall speak their joys abroad. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. The hill of Zion yields a thousand sacred sweets. Before we reach the heavenly fields, before we reach the heavenly fields, we're marching to dwell. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Then let our songs abound and every tear be dry. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground. To fairer worlds on high. To fairer worlds on high. We're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion. The beautiful city of God. And, and we're doing it together. Go be the church. Go turn your world inside out. For Jesus. And while you're at it, bless everybody in the room. What's the box? What's the Christmas What is it? Thank you. 
Turn this off. How, how's the holding coming along? Uh, it's good. Um, Let me know. Yeah, the, the major stuff is, yeah, is my done. Number? The major.